What is going on guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the first ever breakdown video forever here and forever more known as a blowfish breakdown. This video is by request. I reached out to you guys. You guys reached back out to me as to what you wanted to see. The first hit we got was a breakdown of who, what, when, where, how, and why we have our teams the way we have them. So, since I really only have one main team at this point because I'm just way too busy to build a team, I need to though because I'm about to give away all my secrets. What we're going to do is I am going to go to Showdown. We're going to have a team builder episode, much like a lot of the other Poketubers have, but as opposed to just doing it, I, I'm going to explain a little bit as to, like I said, who, what, when, where, how, and why. Because that's what I do. This is going to be very revealing to me as well as a, hopefully uh, a little educational to you guys. Maybe you know all this stuff that I'm saying already. Maybe you don't. I hope the music's not too loud. It might be. I feel like I'm having to scream to get over it. I don't even know if you guys can hear it. It's a test run, whatever. If you can't hear it, it is the Trainer Red Epic Remix. Fantastic. We're going to jump right into it. But before we do, please, please hit the like button. Comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the new camera angle. I said something about it in episode 6, 7, 8 of the Nuzlocke, but those are trash because I did the sound wrong. So, new camera angle, let me know what you guys think as opposed to just the face. We got a little more going on. I feel like it's it's more diving into what's happening. Anyway, we're going to get right into it with the team builder. Uh, here we go. We're going to click on new team. Um, untitled one. So, Blowfish... Breakdown. Why not? We'll call it Blowfish Breakdowns. What's the title of the video is called? That's, that's what we're going to call Format. Uh, OU. We're going to go OU Format because that's typically everything we use. I think two of the Pokemon we use, uh, maybe one isn't OU, but that's no big deal. So we're going to go to Add Pokemon first. Right off the bat, we're going to leave with Volcarona because Volcarona is a fairly new addition to our team. Um, so I, I consider Volcarona a main because I really like how Volcarona worked out. I've been using it a lot lately. Uh, so we are going to start with the breakdown of Volcarona. First off, the held item for Volcarona is going to be the leftovers. Um, because Volcarona, I use Volcarona as a special wall uh, just because, I, I mean, look look down here. Special attack and special defense are just so far above everything else. Uh, there you go. There's a better view of it right there. Um, if you guys can see my pointer, I don't, I don't know how well you can see it. Um, ability is Flame Body. I don't, I don't feel any need to change that because it is what it is. If it gets hit with something physical, then it's going to do a lot of damage, but you got a chance of getting the burn off on the other person. Um, leftovers did the item. So, the move set for Volcarona. Uh, what we have on his move set is I run Roost, Quiver Dance, Bug Buzz, and Fiery Dance. So, we're going to go ahead and Roost because obviously, if you get down to below half HP, you want to get that back up, because he's your physical wall, and I'm sorry, I keep calling him physical, he's your special wall, Volcarona, Volcarona is a special defensive Pokemon, so Roost, uh, Quiver Dance, because if you have Volcarona and you're not running Quiver Dance, then you don't deserve to be running a Volcarona, um, bug buzz, bug buzz, and fiery dance, oops, He's for Fiery Dance. There he is. Fiery Dance. Alright, now, the breakdown is Roost, because like I said, if you get under half HP, Leftovers is only going to do so much every turn. I got him. There's a bug flying in front of me. Oh, uh, that's disgusting, actually. Um, Quiver Dance. Uh, boost user special attack, special defense, and speed by one stage. That is absolutely huge on Volcarona. You get a special defense boost, special attack boost, and a speed boost. Volcarona is not slow by any means, but he's definitely not the fastest Pokemon ever. So you get a speed boost, that's fantastic. Bug Buzz. Here's the big one for Bug Buzz. Uh, you have a 10% chance to lower the target special defense by one. And that that's huge because you're a special attacker. And I think it's Bug Buzz. It doesn't say it here. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please don't please don't tear me apart. But I'm pretty sure Bug Buzz goes past protect. Um I'll have to check that and, and get back to you on it. But I'm pretty sure Bug Buzz ignores Protect, which is a huge deal because it it is. Uh, and Fiery Dance, as opposed to another fire move, because Fiery Dance has a 50% chance to boost your user special attack by one. Now, as a secondary effect of an attack, 50% is a huge Huge number. So a quiver dance, you get one quiver dance and you start fiery dance, and then all of a sudden you got special attack boost left and right. 
next thing you know, you have a maxed out Volcarona sp uh, special attack, and it's, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's four times resisted, no matter what you do, it's going to be a huge, huge, huge chunk of damage. So that's almost, oh, we're not done with breaking down Volcarona, we're break down, breaking down the move set of Volcarona. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, okay, so our EV spread on our Volcarona, oh, by the way, it's a little late, I'm sorry. We are we are assuming all Pokemon in this are five IVs, uh, with the sixth IV being almost perfect or perfect, so it would be six IVs. So, basically, we're just going to go ahead and, and baseline that the Pokemon is has perfect IVs in all six categories. Um, so back into the EVs. Uh, because he has a special defensive wall, we are going to go ahead and boost the HP, and we are going to boost the special defense. Now... We do that because, like I say, it's a special defensive wall, and you gotta you gotta have special defense. You gotta have HP if you're gonna be a wall. You gotta have those two, absolutely. Now, I didn't worry about his special attack or anything else like that because we have so many moves in this set that boost your special attack. We have, I mean, half our moves. We have two of them that boost special attack. So there's no reason to mess with special attack, especially when you have an IV and it's already at 135. Uh, it's it's just a huge special attack. There's nothing about that. So the remaining four. Uh, we did go into special attack. I know I, I just set, got done saying we're not going to have special attack, but there's nowhere else really to put him. We've already done HP. We've already done special defense, so why not put him in special attack when he's a special attacker? Uh, and our nature. Our nature is going to be, if I can find where I wrote it down, calm. We have a calm nature because calm nature is plus special defense and minus attack. That is... The absolute 110% best nature you can have with a Volcarona. Now, moving on. Uh, secondly, we're going to go Gengar. Whoops. Gengar. I'm, I'm not calling him by nicknames just because this is just the breakdown on showdown. And it's, anyway, uh, Gengar is also a fairly recent addition to our team. He may have been a, a, a core a, a proponent component of our team since I started this channel, but for me as, 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 a, as a player, as a battler, Gengar and Volcarona are both very, very recent additions. Um, I do not run a Mega Gengar because Mega Gengar is not OU. Uh, he is, he's an Ubers. So, uh, our Gengar, first off, our item is going to be a Focus Sash because Gengar is so freaking frail. If you don't want a Focus Sash, you can't do anything with him. Levitate his ability because it's a fantastic ability. Uh, but if you watch my battle video the other day, you know sometimes it can be a pain because you don't pay attention to Mold Breaker. Uh, however, Levitate gives immunity to all ground type moves, which is fantastic. Uh, especially if you know you got someone running Earthquake and you have Pokemon that are super effective, weak against Earthquake, like I do. Always a good Pokemon to switch into. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Move sets for Gengar. Um, I can't read my own handwriting, goodness gracious. Alright, so... With the addition of fairy last gen or in the sixth generation, we gotta have a fairy type move because it's it's fantastic. It's just it's it is. So we run dazzling gleam on our Gengar. It's not stabbed, but so what? I mean, whatever. It deals damage to all adjacent foes, which means in a double battle or a triple battle, it's it's good. It's a good move. It's it's a good move. Period. Because it's it's pretty powerful. It's fairy and it, its uh, accuracy is 100%. Uh, we also. We also run Dark Pulse on our Gengar, not W-E. Please excuse my sniffles. I have not been able to shake this congestion this morning. I woke up like this. Goodness gracious. Dark Pulse. We run Dark Pulse because it is a dark move, so we do we do get a little bit of coverage out of it. Uh, it's not stabbed, unfortunately, but we do. it is a move that you can use to fish for flinches, and it's a fairly powerful move to fish for flinches, which is a good... It's it's. It's a good combination of a move. 20% chance to flinch. It's okay. It's not 10%. It's not 50% like Fiery Dance, but it is an okay percentage for flinches. It's 80 uh, damage and 100% accuracy. So it's it's also just a good go-to uh, for whatever. If you don't know what else to do, it's a good go-to. Maybe you'll get a flinch and you'll get a go again. Uh, the third move we run on our Gengar is going to be our first stabbed move, Shadow Ball. Uh, because if you're not running a Pokemon with a stab move, why are you running it? Because the stab is the same type of attack bonus. It's, it's huge. It's, it's a big deal. Shadow Ball. 
is a is a, another 80 power, 100 percent accuracy, but it also has a 20% chance to lower its target's special defense by one. Now, this is good because it's a special move. Gengar is a special attacker, and you can lower someone's special defense. In any move that has more than one effect is always is always a good move in my in my book. I that's that's just the way I go. If you can get more than one effect out of it, why not? Why not kill two birds with one stone? Our last move is also going to be stabbed, not sludge. Sludge bomb. Um, I would prefer to run sludge wave, but it won't let me do it in the game, so we're not gonna do that. I don't know if we're gonna do something wrong or whatever. I just don't have it. I don't know what the deal is. The Gengar they gave away has sludge wave, but. It is what it is. Um, sludge wave. Oops. Sludge bomb. We didn't go over sludge bomb. It is 30% chance to poison the target. Again, a secondary effect. 90 power. 100% accuracy. It is going to be Gengar's most effective move in this move set. Uh, unless you're up against a steel type, which then doesn't do anything. But, you know, whatever. It's stabbed. It's super. It's super effective against fairy. That's that's where we're going. This is a huge move in our move set against fairy types. Unfortunately, in our main setup, it is the only huge move against fairy types we have. Uh, so it, it is what it is. It's weak to poison. It's stabbed. It's 90 power, 100% accuracy, and it's got a lot of it's got a lot of PP. Uh, it's got 16. Um, that's that's a lot to me, and in in especially in like a battle spot 3v3, you, there's no way you're gonna run out of that move. Uh, EV EV spread EV spread on a Gengar. Wow, we are already 10 minutes in. Oh my goodness, I gotta. Whew. Uh, is special attack, speed, and HP. Let's see. We'll go ahead and boost a special attack up because, like I said, you can look at it and see he's a special attacker. Speed is 110. He's got a pretty good speed, but we boosted up there with uh, the EVs, and we have a, a really fast Gengar. And also, we just throw the last four into HP because why not? We don't know what else to do now. The nature here. A lot of people. We'll go a plus special attack nature, but we already have a huge special attack. So what I do with my Gengar is I run a hasty nature, um, and that is going to be plus speed minus defense. Since Gengar is already so frail, I don't care if I lose any defense. We have a, a focus sash, so we're guaranteed at least two turns in with Gengar. Um, but with the speed, that's like an extra, what, 30%? I don't know. I don't know what the nature is number-wise. But what we end up with is a very, very fast Gengar. We're going to move right on to Tyranitar. Pokemon showdown is so slow. But I love it. Tyranitar. Now, Tyranitar is our Mega. So... He's holding the Tyranitar, right, obviously. His ability is Sandstream. I don't really care about Unnerve, because no one really runs berries in competitive battling. Um, so Sandstream. Plus, this is going to tie in later really good with one of our other Pokemon. Uh, we run Bite. Why do we run Bite instead of Crunch? I don't know. But we run Bite instead of Crunch. Uh, i got to fix that. Uh, Earthquake, because it's a huge, huge move. Dragon Dance. Dragon Dance. No, not Aqua Tail. How did that happen? And Rock Slide. Rock Slide. There it is. All right, Bite. It's our Titar is is uh Rock Dark, Dark Rock. Come on, load the Pokemon. There it is. Titar's Rock Dark. So we have our Bite that's dark. It's it's stabbed. I really need to change it to Crunch. Earthquake is not stabbed, but it's still a huge move. Still a huge move. It's 100 power, 100% accuracy. It, it is it's fantastic. Dragon Dance is here for the setup. On the off chance Titar gets in, he has an opportunity to set up. Why not boost his speed and his attack? Uh, rock Slide. Stabbed. Uh, it's 75, 90% accuracy. It's not... It's infuriating to use because when I use 90% accuracy moves, I never hit with them. When my opponents use them, they always hit me. But that seems to be everybody's luck. Um, but you do also get a 30% chance for a flinch, which is why I run it. It's stabbed, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's that. That went really fast. All right, EV spread. EV spread on the Tyranitar uh, is really, really bad. I, I made this Tyranitar a long, long time ago, and I have just come so far since then. I need to redo him, but here's the EV spread. Do not, please don't judge me. I know it's really bad. Uh, we have 252 defense, 
and 252 special defense and then four in HP now this is, is is okay we're boosting his defense and stuff but as I've progressed I've learned it's better to, to do a certain kind of defense and HP as a combination as opposed to just raising the defense because it, it, it just it works better for me I don't know why I can't explain it but the nature is really where it comes in we have an adamant nature which boosts his attack and subtracts from his special attack but it doesn't do anything for our for our defenses and not nothing for our defenses at all which we are we've got good defenses we got 110 and 100 special defense and uh defense inversely but we're not doing anything for them so i really need to go back and fix this tyranitar but so be it he's more of a supporter anyway next we have greninja the greninja he, uh, I didn't really like, I chose Chessman as my starter, I really did, but Greninja has very, very quickly and very strongly become my favorite starter of the Kalos region. Um, ability, we go Protean ability, because it's fantastic, we're running an expert belt, which makes the holders super effective attacks against other Pokemon do 1.2, as opposed to 1, or in the game it just has a small boost. Um... I don't know if the math is actually 1.2, but that's what it says on Showdown. We get a boot. It makes them a little more effective. Our move set is our first move set in Greninja. We are running Rock Slide because, again, I built this Greninja a long time ago, back when I built the T-Tar. Rock Slide's not a great move, but it is what it is. And you get a flinch out of it if you land it. He's not an attacker, so it does no damage. It's really all it is is fishing for the flinches. Uh, on top of that, we also run an Ice Beam for the Dragon types. There it is. Ice Beam on Greninja for the Dragon types. 10% uh, chance to freeze, which never happens because it's 10%. Uh, it's special attack. Greninja's a special attacker because he's the special attacker. He's base, water, dark, which doesn't make any difference at all because we have the protein ability, so everything we do is going to be stabbed. Uh, Ice Beam, Ice Beam, extra sensory. Um, I run an extra sensory. It's 80 and 132 people with 10% chance to flinch the target. A lot of people I've seen run Dark Pulse. with a, That has a 20% chance to flinch the target. Um, so it's it's a little easier to flinch people with a Dark Pulse, but I want Extra Sensory because people expect the Dark Pulse. And they might send out something that... I, I don't know. I just feel like Extra Sensory is the better option when everyone, everyone else runs a Dark Pulse. There's another move with the same effect, just a little bit less chance. To me... It's more about mind games than it really is anything else and strategy and just being a little bit different to throw people off. Uh, next time we do this, you guys are going to see my Venusaur, which everyone has crapped their pants over because apparently I have the absolute weirdest hands-down Venusaur anyone has ever seen. Um, oh, what's our last move? Surf! Surf! Because surf, it is. It's it's a fantastic water move, 100% action. It hits everybody on the field. 90, it is what it is. So here we are with Greninja's EVs. So we have, I'm sorry, I wrote it down, I have to keep looking at what I did. Whoa, dropped the sheet paper. Uh, 252, special attack. We max our special attack, and we max our speed, I believe. Yes, our special attack and our speed, and we throw the last four in HP because I don't know what else to do with it, so that's just the default where they all go. We have, what kind of nature? I have another hasty nature, which isn't bad, uh, oh, I gotta sneeze. Excuse me. Oh, goodness. <coughs> oh. Okay. Bless me. I'm so sorry. Um, hasty nature. Greninja's got a good speed, so we are gonna, we are gonna play off that. We have fully invested speed, EVs, IVs, and a nature for speed, which, again, ends up in a very fast Greninja. Um, oh, wow. There we are. Um, okay, I went over everything with Greninja. Now, here are the two kickers, my two favorite Pokemon in our main battling team. We're going to start with Garchomp. Garbodor, no, Garchomp, which is Dragon Ground. Uh, item, I typically run a Life Orb. I haven't I haven't got the Life Orb in Oris yet, so I'm running Soft Sand. Uh, we get 1.3 attack, and... Uh, a little bit of HP loss. Now, here's the reason I run a Life Orb as opposed to running a Mega Garchomp. I've done the math. With the Life Orb, you actually get a higher attack with the 1.3 times attack than you do if you go to Mega. Your Mega Garchomp gets an attack boost, but the Life Orb gives you a higher attack stat at the cost of a little HP. And also, 
if you're on the life orb and you don't mega your Garchomp, you don't lose the speed. That's a big thing for me is uh, I, I, I really have a lot of investment in speed. It's worked out well for me. Uh, because obviously if you can go first, you get, you get the chunk of damage off first. And it, that could mean the difference between losing a Pokemon and getting that Pokemon to do damage to the other team. And even if it's a quarter HP, that quarter HP can change the entire flow of the battle. I've had two or three battles with the same guy where it's come down to literally who's going to go first and kill the other Pokemon because we're both in red HP and speed would have made all the difference. Now... Now that we've gone over that, is why we're in Life Orb versus a Mega Garchomp? Because a lot of people are interested in that. Uh, I've, I've every people I've battled in person, as opposed to online, have always asked me why don't I Mega my Garchomp if he's going to be such a huge attacker? Uh, and that that's why because the math is is higher attack stat for the Life Orb versus the Mega Stone. Plus you don't lose speed. Now you don't gain the defenses. Um, I think he gains defenses. You don't get all the other changes, but Garchomp is there to be my fast hard hitter. That's a hard physical hitter. That's all he's there for. So, you know, boost the attack stat, keep him, keep him fast. That's how, that's how I play. Um, his move, oh, his ability, Sand Veil. And I run Sand Veil because we have a T-Tar who's got Sand Stream. Uh, a lot of people run Rough Skin on the Garchomp. A Gar my Garchomp is another one that a lot of people consider weird. Um, Sand Veil, because if Sandstorm is active, this Pokemon's evasion is 1.25, and I have an immunity to Sandstorm. I'm ground type anyway, I have an immunity, period. However, that 1.25 evasion, although it's only one and a quarter higher, it is huge. Uh, if you guys watched my last video, I think there were like three rounds of Sandstorm up. I only got hit one time. Uh, a Draco Meteor missed me, I th think an Ice Shard, maybe? I don't know, but I... I I only got hit one time, and there have been battles where Garchomp's been up. It hasn't been touched because of Sand Veil. Um, rough Skin, you do get the residual damage, but that's not a big deal because Sandstream's already up, so you're already getting the residual damage. To me, the benefits of Sand Veil just completely outweigh anything else that you could put on this Pokemon, even if you hack it in and whatever. Um, anyway, I love Life Orb, Sand Veil, Garchomp. The moveset we have on our Garchomp... We run Crunch in the first spot because it's dark, it always hits, it's 80, uh, and it could lower defense. I think Crunch lower defense is lower defense by one, which is great because we're a physical attacker. Uh, the and, and the physical attack plus the minus physical defense is is huge. So a lot of times we'll just Crunch see if we can get the fishing for the the secondary effect. The second move we run is Earthquake because we are a Dragon Ground type Earthquake is 100%, it's physical, and 100 damage, it's stabbed, Garchomp's attack is just off the charts, and that is, that's that's why we run Earthquake, I, I feel like there was more to that, but I guess there's not, uh, Sword Stance, it's real similar to T-Tar, is if, if Garchomp gets in, and we know there's nothing Ice, we know there's nothing Dragon or Fairy, then why not? Sword Stance, you get in, it's it sharply raises, all of a sudden you got a plus two Earthquake coming from an Adamant Garchomp and it's stabbed, which obliterates almost anything that comes in its, in, in front of it. It just, it, it hits, it hits hard, and it it's relentless. Uh, one Sword Stance up is huge. Uh, our last move is Dragon Claw. It's another stab, and it is what I, it's, it's a go-to move. It's no additional effect, but it's still stabbed, it is 80 power and 100% accuracy, and this is what you do when you feel like your opponent is reading the switch, and they've got a flying type, or they have uh, a Pokemon with Levitate. You go for that because as a Garchomp in the ground type, you're going to run Earthquake. So why not throw in a Pokemon that's immune to it? Um, that's where Dragon Claw comes in. You still hit them, it'll still hit hard, and then you have the freedom to get out of there real quick before they before they smack you in the face as a Garchomp, but you still get the damage off on them. That's why Dragon Claw is important instead of having another status move or something to do to them or what have you. Uh, the EV spread on our Garchomp is going to be 252 attack because, I mean, why not? That puts it, we are 130 attack and is now huge. It's huge, huge, huge. And speed, because we have a decent speed. It's above 100. It's not great, but... We boost it up, and we do start to outspeed a lot of stuff, believe it or not. And then, of course, the default 4 HP, because, as stated so many times before, 
I don't know where else to put it, so I just default it there. Because sometimes, if you live on one HP from a hit, that four HP in your EVs is what saved you from o Oko. It, it is. There's no denying it. Uh, our nature. Nature, 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 nature. Adamant, of course. Why did I even have to look at that? Plus attack, minus special attack. It is, it, it's fantastic. Now, I, I've seen once or twice people run a special attack Garchomp. I don't have a problem with that. It's what you want to do. It's significantly lower. It's 50 points lower than his base attack. But you also get Draco Meteor, which is a huge, huge deal. Uh, but I don't, I don't do that because... Because that's what it is. And look, we even run the recommended spread on a Garchomp. Fast Physical Sweeper. Look at that. We are... Ah. Oh, no. We, did, we, we do a different nature. I'm sorry. I run an Adamant Nature as opposed to Hasty or whatever it is to boost his speed. So be it. He's fast enough for me. And here it comes. The Ace in the Hole. My favorite Pokemon. Hands down, without a doubt. Jolteon. I've always loved Jolteon. He's actually RU tier, so to bring a Jolteon to an OU is a little risky because there's a lot of stuff that'll wreck him. However, even I, I think the tier's broken. I, I think the tier system is completely broken when it comes to this specific Pokemon, Jolteon. Um, I, our stats are huge. He is the fastest, the second fastest non-legendary Pokemon. Non-legendary. When you look at it. Uh, you can sort them by speed, and the fastest non-legendary is Jolteon, 130. Then, uh, I'm sorry, second fastest. Then Electrode has 135, I think. Anyway, Electrode is a little bit faster than Jolteon, but Jolteon is so freaking fast. He's he's faster than almost anything in OU, unless you bring a legendary Pokemon that's considered OU. You might outspeed him. Anyway, enough of my rambling about the, the tier system. I didn't make it. I just play it. Uh, item... Item, item, item. Choice. All right. This is I. I used to run a magnet and stuff like that because he was electric type, but whatever. And then I finally sucked up. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna choice specs uh, because we get 1.5. Holder special attack is 1.5, but you can only use the first move it selects. Now, ability is Volt Absorb. I don't care about Quick Feet. Jolteon's already freaking fast. I don't. I, I don't. I don't need. I just I don't need an extra speed. I don't I don't find it important. So we do volt absorb. Our move set is Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. It's 90 and 100. It's not Thunder. Thunder's 110 and 70, but we're not running a rain dance team, so we can't run Thunder because it's it's not very accurate at all. We get a little less power, 20 less power, um, but we get 100% accuracy, which is a far better trade-off, in my opinion. Especially when we're not running... If we ran Rain Dance, we wouldn't run Thunder or Jolteon, but we don't. We're on Thunder Wave, because Paralysis is good. Uh, you don't always get one off, though. It, it's kind of... It, because Jolteon is a lower tier and he's a little frail, I don't really like doing it unless I absolutely know I'm going to be able to get one off and live. Uh, Shadow Ball. I know we're running Shadow Ball under Gengar, but what this does is this allows you to, as a Jolteon... Because it's so obviously an electric type Pokemon, you run a Thunderbolt, Thunder Fang. I, Thunder Fang, I, I don't really see any spe uh, physical Jolteons, but anyway, it's an option. Uh, you, you know you're running Thunder or a, an electric move, and pretty much everybody who's ever run a Jolteon and done it correctly is running a choice. So what happens is someone will go out into an electric type that is, is just not going to take, or, or a ground type, rather, going to a ground type. Ooh, and you absolutely cannot hit them, so you're forced to switch your Jolteon out. But the Shadow Ball is for the switch ends where you know they've got something that's going to completely be negated and, and it's not going to affect them with your electric for ground types. That's exactly what Shadow Ball is for. And your choice, so it's not stab, but you do get the 1.5, which is higher than what a stab would be if we didn't have the choice specs and he was a ghost type. Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of talking circles here. I hope I'm still making sense. Uh, and then the last move is Volt Switch. Volt Switch is fantastic because if you throw out your Jolteon and you know they're going to switch and you just don't think your Jolteon can take it, you just Volt Switch right out. It's it's stabbed. It's powerful. It's a special move. Volt Switch is a special move. That's fantastic. You get the choice spec boost. You get out of there. You still keep your switch priority. It's not a hard switch. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It does 70. Shadow Ball does 80. Thunder Wave is... Blah, blah, blah. Thunderbolt does 90. Our EV spread on our Jolteon, obviously, 
obviously Jolteon's getting a speed boost and a special attack boost because special attack plus the choice specs, that's what, 55? So that takes it up to one. 165 is our base special attack with choice specs, which is a huge, 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 huge number for special attack, especially when you add this. Now, our Jolteon's nature, I think I natured him for speed. Uh, let me double check that. I did. I natured my Jolteon for speed. Uh, we did a hasty nature, uh, plus speed, minus defense, because like I said, Jolteon is somewhat frail, so I didn't really bother too much with his defenses or anything like that. If he gets hit and he lives, great. If he gets hit and he dies, whatever. He's there to be a fast, special smacker. Um, and then, oh, yep, yep, forgot the four in the... In the oh, no, 12. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on here? Plus 252. Whew. And then four there. That's our Jolteon. We don't need to be. We don't need to boost his special attack because he's got the choice specs, and uh, it's already it's high enough. It's it is what it is. That's why I went with hasty nature. And bless you. My wonderful wife just sneezed. That's what that was. Um, so anyway, like I was saying, we go with the choice specs because that boosts our special attack. We don't need a nature to boost our special attack because it's stupid high. And then we have a nature to boost our speed because. If another Jolteon comes in, I want to be able to outspeed that Jolteon. Um, now, if another Jolteon's choice scarfed, so be it. But it is it is what it is, guys. That is that's our team. Um, a half hour into this, I'm sorry it took so long. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys don't just be like, oh, it's a half hour long. Blah 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 blah. I'm gonna start building another team. We're gonna have that, and we'll do a few battles with that, and we'll break that one down too. This was a lot of fun for me, guys. Explaining this to why, explaining to you guys why I do what I do. Um, Hopefully, not saying you guys didn't know what you were doing, but hopefully you guys were able to learn something from this. Uh, or maybe not so much learn something, but think about something a little bit different than most people would think about it. That's that's how I approach this whole thing, and it's really been a fantastic strategy for me so far. Uh, again, guys, if you stuck through the end, thank you very much. As always, your support means so much to me. Please hit that like button. Comment. What do you want to do? Share. Have at it. I'm always open for battles. Tumblr. Twitter. Uh, YouTube, you're already here on YouTube. Tumblr and Twitter are going to be in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.